when I take and tie them to the side of my trailer or to a hitching post, they move over to the left, bump. They move over to the right, bump. They go to pull back, bump. Oh, wait a minute. I'm uncomfortable here. I'm uncomfortable here. I'm uncomfortable here. Where am I comfortable? Right here. Right here. Take a rope halter. For one thing, kind of gather in a little bit where you can kind of see. There you go. Different ropes, different ways they're made, different stiffnesses, all have different ways to communicate. They all have different jobs to do as well. I have found this rope halter can not only be used every day, but for training as well. And I found that the stiffness of it and the size of the knots all make an important thing. And the, the, the circumference of the rope itself is all really important. But see, this is how we get it when we take it off the shelf or when you get it from me. But it has to be adjusted in order to be able to communicate properly to the nose, properly underneath the chin, and properly to the pole. The problem is when you have a halter that's there just hanging, notice how the back, the bottom half of that halter mm -hmm. is about this much room. Those are nerves on the back there, okay? Those are nerves right there. And if that thing touches those nerves, he should say, oh, that hurt, I'll get away from it, i.e., you're teaching him to neck rein, okay? But when it's, when it's big like that, it takes a long time for him to make a decision. So I want to make it snugger, tighter, kind of like a, uh, like, kind of like a hackamore. And I'll talk about hackamores here in a few minutes. So I take my rope halter. Let's take the right-hand side here, and I take the knot, and I push on it like this. You see how it becomes loose? Mm -hmm. You see that? Okay. I have my halters made so that they're loose so that you can adjust them. It's really, really important to adjust them. So I take it, I hold my hand here solid, my left hand here, take my right hand, I push it in the direction, and I hold on to that knot, and I pull it down tight. Notice now I've changed it. Okay. I want it to, to be approximately three fingers apart on an average little saddle mule like this here, so it sets down in the nose just right, okay? Um, and then again, I'll bring this mule over here and, and kind of go over that a little bit with you. So that's my first adjustment there. You can see I changed it almost two inches. Then you're gonna go over here to this side and you're going to bump on it, get it loose, push it this way toward your hand and then pull on it. Why do you like the two knots instead of the four knots? The two knots are a very good question. So the question is, why do I like the two knots rather than four knots? These two other knots aren't doing anything at all. They're actually just hitting a bone. They don't mean diddly. These two knots here, I'm going to show you in a minute how they fully communicate to the mule. These two knots here are set right in the nose, right in the pocket. It's going to shut their wind off. That's the purpose of that. See, I'm making them uncomfortable. Remember I showed you how I pick up on the lead rope and it makes it tight here and it opens up here? Mm -hmm. Opens the door up to go. Opens the door up to go. Well now, with a halter that's adjusted like this, it, it, you'll see how quickly it shuts the wind off and works on nerves immediately. Where the other two knots actually pulls it away. There's two knots on the bottom here. Doesn't give it a full connection alongside of the face. Mm -hmm. it just that little bit makes a difference, folks. You gotta remember, they know when a fly hits them, right? And if they know when a fly hits them, why in the world are we using these great big honking lead ropes and big halters and all these chains and stuff? When you go to the world championships, you see packers and people with chains on their animals and this sort of thing. I'm readjusting this here one more time. And uh, you see uh, the white and you see hair coming off and stuff. They're killing nerves here, vital nerves that's really important for your rainy killing nerves with that chain, you know, uh, killing nerves in a variety of ways. So now you see I've got it closer. So I'll go ahead. I don't care how many things was going on. That mule says, if you pick up on that lead rope, I'm going to be uncomfortable. You got the idea? So we have to spend time teaching them this. Okay. Now notice here, I brought those two knots together. They're approximately three fingers apart. You see that? All right. 
These two here communicate, communicate, go right, this one comes off, this one goes on, go left, this one comes up, this one comes over, okay? It also teaches a quo, and then when it pressures off, a go. And I'm gonna teach you this in just a minute, watch this. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down. I have to have these two ropes be snug so that I'm touching these two sides of the face right here, okay? So I take this rope and I push on it, and as I push on it, you'll see the loop getting bigger. Do you see that? So I follow it all around. Notice also my nose piece is getting smaller, okay? So I follow it on around, follow it on around, follow it on around. Now, my place where I attach my lead rope is going to be here, and notice it is smaller. I take the other side, I push on it, I follow it on around, I follow it on around. Now, you see how small it is? You're thinking, man, that's awful small. Yeah, but by the time this meal starts moving around, these knots start getting tighter. The area starts getting bigger. At first, I want it snug like pulling my socks on. Because as the animal starts moving around, these knots are going to change. It'll be just about the right consistency of how big it needs to be around the animal's nose. Okay? So now, this knot, really important. See this knot here? This knot here hits the jaw, right here. And it pushes on it, and it makes the animal uncomfortable. And he's thinking, man, what can I do to be comfortable? And he goes forward, the knot comes away. He pulls back, and it comes up against him. He goes forward, and here's what happens. We tend to want him to go forward using this rope here, which goes in behind the ears and on the pole this one here because what happens is when I pick up on this lead rope and ask him to go it puts pressure on the pole especially horses you ever notice how they rear up and they they pull back and this sort of thing now a mule will do that at first pretty soon he'll find out this is a lot of pressure I can't I can't take the pressure plus the two places on the nose and he drops his head and comes forward you see all because I waited and let the halter do the job Okay, so now, let's look at this. Here I have my halter, okay? Let's bring you over here, Ray, right over here for me. Stand right about here facing that little camera right there, right over here like this. Okay. Put your left arm out. Now, this is very important, folks. I want, you to, I want you to watch this. Watch and see a halter work. Everybody just thinks a halter, you just tie them up with it or lead them from A to B. Now, put your other hand here, right here like that. All right, now, let this kind of hang down just a little bit like this. Now, watch this. This is really important. When I take and go forward, watch this knot underneath here, okay? You can I get it like this. Watch this knot. Can everybody see it okay? Okay. Now watch when I go forward. This hand's going to be here. Now see how the knots come up off the nose? Notice the pressure hits here, and now you feel the pressure here, right? right. So one, <coughs> two, three. I don't have to hit this. I'm giving my mule, my donkey, a chance to first listen to the pressure coming <laughs> off of here. Second, pressure here. Third, coming here. So that I don't get this, you see? Because guess what happens? When they do do that, they end up stiff, stiffening all major neck muscles. See, the problem is you may fix one problem, but then you've developed two or three others, you see? So I want to keep from that. So now watch this. Watch this. This is really, really important. When I want to go to the right, notice pressure comes off, pressure goes on here. You feel that? When I want to go to the left, notice the pressure comes off, pressure goes here. You see how that rolls in the nose? Mm -hmm. And that simply tells the animal to turn right and turn left. Uncomfortable, comfortable. Uncomfortable, comfortable. Do you see that? If you learn those five steps, comfortable, uncomfortable, ask, tell, demand, you can communicate. All right, now watch this. We got pressure here, you can feel that. And you got this right here, you got the little pressure here, you can feel that, now watch. I push here, and when I do that, the pressure comes off of here and you feel the pressure off of here. So where does he wanna go? Where it's comfortable. No pressure, no pressure, here's the pressure. So he's gonna to wanna to go back, right? Now, I wanna go forward, same thing, like I was telling you about before. The knots come up off the nose, pressure comes here first, 
pressure cures comes here second. So I stay away from a lot of nerves up here, and I don't create this. Will you have it at first? Sure. You will, because you've got to develop your hands. Okay? But after a while, the halter, you'd let the halter do the work, and you're going to get the job done. Okay, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Did everybody see that? Do you got a different appreciation of what halter is now? Okay. Really, think, really important. Yeah. Okay, now, it gets pretty tiring <laughs> holding them around like this, okay? Uh, notice how the mule right now, she's kind of looking around and Fluffy over there is kind of in one spot. Of course, she's got a, a halter fairly well adjusted there down on the nose and stuff. But here's what happens. When I take and tie them to the side of my trailer or to a hitching post, they move over to the left, bump. They move over to the right, bump. They go to pull back, bump. Oh, wait a minute. I'm uncomfortable here. I'm uncomfortable here. I'm uncomfortable here. Where am I comfortable? Right here. Right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to throw hobbles on them, which you don't want to do anyway. Uh, hobbles is a whole different story. You just put a properly adjusted halter on, on a short lead rope, short chain on the side of your trailer, and pretty soon all this dinking around goes away because you taught the nose, the nose, right?